All right, well, thanks for everyone for joining. My name is Devin Desai. I'm going to be your presenter for today. My role here at Panzer is the Director of Cloud Architects. A little bit about myself, I am actually fairly new to Panzera, but I have uh, sold or resold their technology through um, you know, partners in the past. And my previous roles were in engineering at Dell EMC and at Dell Technologies as well. So a lot of familiarity with cloud-based backups, traditional backups, and just overall data center solutions. So today's focus, we're going to be talking about breaking up with backups and why copies are a whole Holding you back. Just as a reminder, we do have a chat window, so you can enter in questions into chat, and I'll try to pause and address those as I'm going through this presentation. And the rest of the questions, we can also open it up for Q&A at the end of the presentation as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and kick this off. So when we talk about backups and a lot of our customers that approach us really tend to focus in three key areas for problems with backups. First and foremost being costs, right? Of course, that's a top of mind for almost every single one of our customers. After all, data is always growing. It hasn't stopped growing. And as actually IDC, Gartner, Markets and Markets, and a few other analyst firms out there are forecasting the data, unstructured data is particularly is going to double in the next next five years. So a lot of the contributors to that growth is going to be devices, right? So if you think of your mobile phone, your iPhone, those things are really, really high, gen, uh, high resolution. They generate a lot of data. You have connected devices like IoT data. When it comes to uh, contributing to data growth, there's an explosion of unstructured data out there. After all, that's all the data that's being generated by machines and by users. So the higher resolution images, IoT devices, all the things that contribute to this. And of course, the copies of this data. So not only are businesses being tasked with making solutions faster, replicating that data across the geography or region, what actually ends up happening is all of this data sprawl across the enterprise and then you have to go and back it up. So now you have multiple systems that are being backed up across multiple locations. Not only that, to satisfy compliance and regulatory environments, you're also having to buy secondary backups. So you have an offsite copy and offsite backup. All these costs tend to pile up and add up and really become a really big problem to tackle when it comes to enterprise solutions and forecasting growth five years out. The other aspect is going to be time, right? We all know time is money, but when it comes to backups, two key areas of focus are going to be how fast can you back up all of this data that's growing? Or even worse, if you actually had to do a full restore of this data, how quickly can you restore? And one big contributor to the time factor is that we are seeing a larger hard drives out in the marketplace. So people are actually purchasing larger drives and they're actually purchasing fewer of them. So performance actually scales down as you increase capacity of hard drives. So the amount of time it takes to back up with fewer drives or restore data with fewer drives actually ends up being an inverse relationship. So these are really big factors when it comes to that. The other factor with time and cost when it comes to LAN or cloud-based backups is going to be bandwidth. Right? So if it's a cloud-based backup, you have cloud workloads, you might have issues with the available internet connection at a particular region, or you might have aged hardware, aged network switches, and even trying to back something up on your network today can take a really long time. So all of these things kind of amalgamate into becoming problems when it comes to cost complexity and overall time for backup. To double click on the cost factor a little bit, and I'll switch gears from backup to network attached storage. So just a little bit about what we do. We are an unstructured data company and traditional NAS has a real big problem when it comes to data replication and also having to back it up. So if you think of companies like NetApp or you think of companies like EMC, Isilon, they are you know, the by far the market leaders when it comes to market share, but they have the age old problem having to replicate your data and also back it up. So if you take a customer's environment that say you just save one terabyte of data, almost immediately that one terabyte ends up being replicated for high availability or business continuity. And then you have a third or fourth backup of that replicated data. So now you end up having one terabyte turns into three or four, depending on how many backups you have, an offsite backup or a primary backup. That adds to the cost factor, right? It's, it's this growth and exponential uh, compounding of data. One data bit is written, it actually, a protected amount of data is going to be two to three X or maybe in four X that. So you can multiply that times the amount of regions or locations a customer has in their environment. Get a good understanding of what that looks like. 
With Panzura, our network attached storage solution, when you purchase one terabyte license of our product, you're actually only ever going to write one terabyte of data. That really is an immediate ROI for all of our customers that are looking at unstructured data for Panzura. We'll get into the technologies here in the next slide and show you or explain how we actually prevent customers from having to buy these tertiary or even secondary tertiary backup copies of their data. So what does a typical deployment of our solution look like? So what we're depicting here in this environment is we have a three region deployment of a customer's data center, right? So up to the top left, we have US East, uh, that's New York. And then off to the top right, we have London. So this particular customer is a international customer. And then they have a third site in the bottom right, and that's a cloud-based workload. So this is a pretty common scenario, right? In three sites, you can have upwards towards 200 sites. But really what you have laid out here is a scenario where you have a certain set of data uh, deployed in New York and a certain set of data for the teams to support in EMEA in London and a certain set of data for the cloud workload. And in order for an enterprise to function and share this data on a traditional NAS platform like NetApp or EMC, you would have to replicate that data from site A to site B and site D. This is where uh, the data availability and the traffic shaping and all the nuances to kind of supporting your own infrastructure comes into place. Very costly from a time and management standpoint. How does Panzura change that paradigm? So I'll draw your attention to the middle of this diagram. What we see here is a public or private cloud. This is going to be your primary object store. This is where all of your data will be centralized and saved on our Panzera solution. So for, let's take, for example, AWS. They have uh, S3 storage. Or with Microsoft Azure, they have Azure Blob Storage. Or Google would be Google Cloud. And you can customers even build their own private clouds with products like EMC, ECS, NetApp Storage Grid, or even uh, IBM iCause, which is the old CleverSafe product. So any one of these solutions, uh, we can support and write data to that object store. What's really unique when we write that is we write it once, and the technology, the object storage behind that provides high resiliency and the high durability in the automatic data protection across the entire geography. When you think of the cloud, what's really nice about that is when you consume it, it's already managed, maintained, and protected for you. Of course, um, you may want to still back that up. Some customers do for compliance purposes. But again, because we're already building in the resiliency using object storage, this means you would have less copies to protect your data. So immediately you have a slash amount of capacity, at least one third of your capacity has been slashed just by the sheer virtue of adopting our platform. The second thing we do to save our customers money here is we have an immutable storage platform, which means if a user writes a PowerPoint or an Excel file or any document to the Panzera filer, it gets immediately committed to the object store and it's written in an immutable fashion, which means data can never be deleted. This gives you inherent protection against your data. And if someone goes and modifies that data or adds or edits the PowerPoint in this example, we basically have a second version of that file. So now we're just adding to the original file and you have version one, version 1 1.2, version 1.3, and so on and so forth, as you keep modifying and editing these files over time. Uh, because we're tracking all of those changes in the cloud, you have inherent protection against that data because it cannot be deleted. This is another way we reduce the amount of copies an enterprise would have to deploy and ultimately reducing the cost around the unstructured data for their environment. So what's really nice about this hybrid cloud approach is that the data doesn't ever have to be replicated. Once it's written out to the edge location, data makes its way to the cloud every minute. It's snapshotted and it's synced. It's available for everyone to consume at a global scale. Wherever you have our Panzera solution installed in any data center, any remote office, branch office, any cloud instance, you will have full access to that data once it's written and, written and it's available anywhere else without copies being produced. So that's how we address costs. So we talked about performance for a little bit, but let's double click on how that impacts, how that would work in this sort of deployment. I mentioned that we have a Panzera filer or a, a cached edged instance. So in this case, we actually leverage the customer's data center footprint for solid state drives. And we would cache all the data locally. So when we read or write data to that local location here in New York, all of that data stays on the network and then makes its way to the cloud every one minute and bursts. Once that happens, it's available for everyone to access uh, anywhere in the world. So what's really nice about that is in backup workloads or even production 
production workloads is you don't have to wait to sync rep replicate your data or sync it or you know kind of do a file upload and download manually as you would have to do with traditional file systems and all of that work and that ip is, is actually handled by pensor on the back end that is basically how we work as a global file system we can take an ordinary object store like microsoft azure or amazon s3 and with our software we can transform it into a high performance file system so again just like a network drive you're used to reading and writing to at, on your own net corporate network you would have that same capability using the cloud we talked about slashing the cost right so just want to reiterate the fact that we don't have to back up the data because it's written to an immutable file system i.e our solution in the cloud we can also reduce cost by doing global deduplication and compression so one of the things that we do that's unique to Panzer here is whenever we write data to any one of the locations, we compress the data, we dedupe it. So we actually look at to see if there's any commonality of those files or those bits that make up that file across the entire global file system. Traditional file systems like NetApp or EMC actually can do compression and dedupe, but they can only do it per site. And that's a problem because now only the data that's unique to that profile for that location gets data optimization and you might have similar data that's sitting out in London or in the cloud but there is no coherency or there's no intelligence to allow for those locations to talk to one another to actually share that data and actually compress that down even further um, and that's actually what we do that's actually how we further drive down the costs for our customers because we can do a global compression and global dedupe of the entire world view of the entire data set and now find all the commonality across all those files and reduce it down to save our customers a lot a lot of money we've actually taken customers from a traditional netapp environment to our platform and seen over a 70% reduction on their entire data set once they migrated to Panzer. So huge cost savings, right? I mentioned one third in that particular case with customer had so many locations that were able to drastically reduce our footprint. But on average, we're seeing around one third reduction in total cost over our competitors when it comes to traditional file systems. One of the unique things that we do with our snapshot based technology in the cloud or our immutable file system is that we track everything at a block level. So I mentioned versioning. So if you actually have a, a file that's written to the cloud, if you break that apart, you understand that that's actually a whole bunch of blocks that makes up that file, right? A bunch of bits of data. And then when we come in and say user edits that file, maybe adds a couple of PowerPoint slides to it, what we're doing is appending more blocks to that original file. So if you see here on the left, we have a a set of blocks that make up the file. And if that's edited, you will have version one and version two of that file with all the unique blocks that change after the original version of that. Given this uh, tracking that we do at a block level, we actually provide built-in ransomware resilience to our file system. So even if you have a bad actor that comes into your environment, it wakes up from a dormant state, goes out to your file system and begins encrypting all these files, right? All your intellectual property in your environment. Because we're tracking all the files at a block level, even if a new encrypted version of that file comes in, it doesn't matter. We can always revert to that last known good state of that file, the previous version, point to those unique blocks, and then you can recover all of your data without actually ever having to do a costly or lengthy restore of that data. This technology is so powerful, in fact, that no customer in our history has ever had to pay a ransom on our platform. That's a huge, huge investment protection when it comes to adopting our technology, just by sheer virtue of our security and how we provide immutability against ransomware for our file system. We do have additional technology to be able to track and audit and check for user activity on the entire file system. That technology is called a Panzera Data Services. It's actually a SaaS-based cloud engine that runs and actually looks at all activity in the file environment. So if there was any issues with file recovery or ransomware attacks, we can actually go in there and look at the metadata or the pattern of how this data spread across an environment. We could identify which files were affected in a short amount of time and actually go back and revert all of those affected files to the last known good state. These are really, really powerful technologies that our enterprises are looking for. We have those built into our platform and available uh, via cloud-based offerings. 
So some statements from our customers. We have a customer at Timmins that actually had a problem with their backups, right? Uh, we've talked about this a little bit, but you know, having a traditional backup job that runs once a day, right, seven days a week, that starts on Sunday, finishes on Saturday for a full backup. They had the traditional disk-based backup on their network. When they moved over to Panzura, that's 60 terabytes of data. Uh, they were now backing up within an hour. And they were able to do their quality checks on that. There were really no issues with performance. And again, that's due to the fact that we can reduce that data by compression and reduce the footprint and the amount of data they're actually having to back up greatly reduces the amount of time it takes. And of course, because we use intelligent caching at the edge, we're also able to use high performance to accelerate those workloads as well. So let's talk a little bit about our partners, right? So I mentioned we we write to the cloud, we partner with object storage companies. By far, the major three hyperscalers, AWS, Azure, and Google are, are some of our biggest cloud partners. IBM does have a product called iCause, which is a, a storage appliance that we can also write to for backend object storage. Dell EMC is ECS product. Cloudian, Scality, and Wasabi uh, is a really big newcomer, as well as NetApp Storage Grid. So these are some of the traditional object storage partners that we partner with. So if you have any one of these partners that you're working with, we can surely partner with them as well. Other technology partners, right? We do work with backup providers today. So we have customers that want to replace their old expensive data domain storage appliance or their Avamar appliance, or maybe a rubric or Cohesity. We can take traditional backup software like Veeam or like Veronis, uh, excuse me, Veritas, and we can simply act as a backup target as well. So we see this in certain environments where customers just want to use us to back up their databases, back up their unstructured data. So we can take a backup software and just pull to Panzura and back up and using our intelligent compression and dedupe and hybrid cloud capabilities by pushing that data out to the cloud, we're able to leverage the low cost and the economics of object storage to drive down the total cost of ownership for these users, right, or for these clients. So this is very powerful. Uh, if you have any opportunities when it comes to workloads for unstructured data or for backups, be sure to, to entertain our technology. We can surely provide some reference architectures for that. We have one question. So one question came up is, can we write both files and archive files as well as backup? Absolutely, right? So first and foremost, our solution, Panzura, is, in, is a global file system. So by sheer virtue of having a file system and coupling that with low cost object storage, it is a perfect match made in heaven for file archive. And then the backups are pretty much built in if you think of it that way. So I don't like to think of backups separately with our solution. I like to think of it as a built in in our DNA and what we do. So it's actually going to provide both file archive backups all in one, right? So it's not going to be a separate license that you have to purchase. It is not a, a different technology you have to deploy. It just comes with our solution. It's just part of it. Good question. Do we work with other clouds besides the big three? Yeah, so I touched on it in the last slide. We do work with you know uh, new, some newcomers like Wasabi. We do have storage appliances, so customers are really super secure, like in case of federal government, where they want to build their own private cloud. In fact, we actually just got certified with uh, AWS's C2S, top secret government clearance, uh, their cloud for that, which is a really big milestone because there's no other competitor in our space that actually has that certification. So that's huge because we can meet government compliance for these types of workloads and there's really no issues with that. And that's also a testament to how secure our platform is. We actually have a lot of resiliency, a lot of capabilities around a secure data erase so to meet compliance, we actually have to be able to prove that we wipe the data, not only our solution, but where it's stored. And because we don't always store it on our platform, we store it on partners' platforms, we can actually provide the data evidence chain uh, to show that it was a securely erased. So it's another technology that we have built into our platform. In fact, that was actually co-designed with a three-letter government agency. What are the bandwidth requirements or how do you handle uh, data egress charges on our solution because it is it can be cloud-based? Good question. Cloud providers typically do charge for pulling data out of the cloud, right? That's metered. If you pay for a direct connection or express route, 
you do get some performance gains and a little bit better negotiation on the pricing there. But for the most deployments, that could be an issue. But remember, what we're doing is actually compressing the data. And we're only ever sending the changes from one site to the other site if there's actually a collaboration or updates being made to the file. So that's how we actually greatly reduce the egress charges when it comes to this. And in fact, one of the big selling point store solution is we require about half as much bandwidth to deploy our solution than our closest competitor. That means you would have to buy more bandwidth, more internet connectivity, and that's actually going to drive up your cost. Because we're so optimized at the edge, you can actually keep your connections in place for the most part and not actually have to increase your costs there. Uh, we're seeing upwards towards 90% reduction on data egress using our solution. So very good question. I do want to invite the rest of the audience if they want to attend our September 30th webinar. We have a Let's Get Analytical. That's going to go back to that Panzera data services technology that I talked about, the SaaS-based product for analytics. We'll be able to showcase how we find, audit, analyze all of the data in our cloud file systems that I mentioned. Remember, this is a SaaS-based offering. We completely host that so we can actually show that live in our presentation. So please join us on the 30th. We'd love to see you there. Thank you very much.